Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Smart. This is the last part, part three of strap beam footing design. So, for the review, this is the strap beam footing we are going to design through Excel sheet, and the column to column distance is 3.51 meter, right? And what we have designed in the part one and part two, we have put the data in our these cells, input shells only. FCK is 20 m Newton per mm square tensile steel is the problem is that the problem can be changed according to the condition so we have put the data like 500 Newton per mm square soil bearing capacity is 150 mm center to center distance is 3.51 meter you have to put the data in these pink cells only and the column A this is the column A uh, eccentric footing this is the column A we have put the data 300 by 300 mm and the column B is also 300 by 300 mm and the load on column A is 331 and load on column B is 520 so we have calculated the required area of the footing 6.24 meter square so we have assumed the width of the footing is 1.5 meter so finally the according to the criteria it has calculated the x bar distance x bar distance from the column b and it has calculated the l1 and l2 l1 will be the, the in the quadratic equation l1 will be the minimum of these two so 2.23 meter is the l1 distance for the footing we have calculated the width and the l1 and l2 also been calculated as 1.93 next actually it has also calculated the net upward pressure which comes out to be 2.204.55 kilonewton per meter square and we have calculated the per meter width of the footing load per meter width of the footing that comes out to be 306 in the next we have also calculated the depth of the footing according to the bending moment criteria in this portion we have uh, taken the turn in the transfer direction for the bending moment the critical at the face of this column because this column is having the highest load so finally it comes out to be the in bending moment is 36.82 kN meter and for the with the bending moment criteria we have calculated the effective depth the effective depth comes out to be 117 so due to shear consideration we have uh, chosen the 300 mm as the 2 to 2.5 we have to increase so we have put 300 mm clear cover 50 mm in case of the footing assume dia of the bar is 16 mm so finally depth of the coming 358 next reinforcement has also been calculated we have chosen the 12 mm dia uh, space, spacing comes out to be 391 oh, so we have taken 150 mm so finally the number of the bars 15 in footing a in the transverse direction and in length in footing b 30 number of bars are required so it has been calculated by the actual sheet by default right so we have to choose our dia only dia of the bar only in the distribution direction in the footing case in the distribution direction the 10 number of bars are required so 12 mm dia 150 mm center to center in the transfer direction that is the main direction main reinforcement comes at the bottom and in the nominal reinforcement 12 mm dia 150 mm center to center then in the part 2 we have designed the strap beam footing for the shear force calculation and bending moment calculation is must so this sheet has calculated the shear force calculation at the different points like uh, outer face of the column a this is the column a and this is the column b and the inner face of the column a right the maximum shear force will be at the inner face of the column b and this is the shear force at the outer face of the column b bending moment has also been calculated by this sheet so 1.32 is the distance from this point a where the shear force is zero so main criteria where the shear force is zero the bending moment will be maximum so we have to calculate at this point as the bending moment that comes out to be 327.25 and for the sagging bending moment this 101.55 so we have also calculated the point of counter fracture what is the point of counter fracture point of counter fracture is where the bending moment is zero so bending moment is zero is at 1.2 meter from this phase this point f right so depth of the strap beam footing has also been calculated because T beam action will occur at this point from C to D after D it will become a critical section the chances of failure of this beam lies greater at point D because no T beam action 
occur at D point. So the critical phase for the calculation will be for the calculation of the depth will be at D point. So uh, this Excel sheet has calculated the hogging bending moment at D. So the depth of the criteria also been calculated. 580 comes out to be we have provided we have chosen the 600 mm so finally the depth of the footing from top to bottom is 650 mm right so the tb action is also covered by this sheet the formula as per the is code we have to find the effective width of the flange by this formula l naught by l naught b plus 4 so what is l naught l naught is the distance of point of zero moment so zero moment from this point to c point this is the zero moment we have to calculate this uh, distance that comes out to be 3.3 meter in our case right so finally we have find the effective width that comes out to be 836 and since the tv action is co covered the moment of resistance comes out to be 968 so and that, that is greater than the uh, moment comes out that is minus 269 so vxu is less than df and hence the compression occurs in the flange phase right and the web phase the tension will occur so now in this part we are going to calculate the longitudinal reinforcement in the beam at the top for the maximum hogging bending moment the maximum hogging bending moment from this bending moment diagram this is 327 for this we we will calculate the reinforcement so formula for reinforcement is this so finally the ast required comes out to be 1345 minimum ast as per the is 456 that is 652 and the flexor minimum reinforcement as per the IS code 0.85 upon Fy BF into D BF is the effective width of the flange we have also calculated right so you have to uh, take your uh, AST from the BF calculation right okay considering action at the point D which consists of rectangular section only that comes is 269 right 269 at the point D maximum bending moment comes out at point s so we have calculated so finally the ast required for maximum of these four 3, 1345 652 860 or 1249 that is so we have to assume the bar dia if you are assuming the 16 dia so that comes out to seven bars we have to provide at the top right seven bars of 16 dia so in our case if you are going to provide the 20 number so five numbers comes out at the top because this is for the hogging bending moment right so next we have to check for the tension reinforcement and check by m1 by v plus l naught that comes out to be is code should be greater than or equal to ld ld what is ld ld is the development length so what is m1 m1 is the formula 0.87 fi ast into d minus 0.42 xu and what is xu xu formula is 0.87 fi ast upon 0.36 fck bf bf is the width of the flange so we have put the r values so finally xu has come m1 has come shear force v value v value has come at the point of contour flexure 383 it has been calculated 383 right so what is l naught l naught in this case l naught 12 times of the dia we have chosen the 20 mm right so 240 or d whichever is greater so in our case 600 mm so finally uh, this is tau bd in the case of ld the formula is this one and tau bd has been taken from this chart and in our case we are using m20 so we have to take 1.2 so finally 11.11.33 comes out to ld and this value comes out to be 15.83 so hence this is greater than ld so hence okay okay next is longitudinal reinforcement in the beam at the bottom for the sagging bending moment so we have to check this uh, bending moment diagram for the sagging bending moment is 101 is the maximum sagging bending moment so we have to calculate for this bending moment right the formula is same ast so finally our ast required comes out to be 413 minimum ast we have to check 0.12 percent of bw bw is the weight wrap web portion this is the web portion because we are taking in the beam direction right so 234 the flexor minimum reinforcement from the is 856 the formula is this one 306 and finally we have to take the maximum of these three 413 is the maximum moment 
for this we have to take the dia of the steel we are going to choose and if you are choosing the 10 dia the 6 numbers of dia is required so we are going to choose the 12 number 4 numbers are required at the bottom portion of the strap beam right so l1 has calculated l2 has calculated the strap beam reinforcement has been calculated now for the shear re reinforcement these are the detailing of the strap beam the shear reinforcement and the maximum shear force has already been taken the maximum shear reinforcement will be 438.32 in our case so it has already been taken by this sheet the tau v b u upon b into d 2.44 newton per mm square and the area of the steel is comes out to be 8 now so pt provided is 0.87 from this interpolation sheet so we can choose the different values so it lies between 0.75 and 1 so 0.87 comes out to be tau c 0.589 newton per mm square shear bars are required comes out to be so we are assuming the 10 times of 10 mm dia if you are assuming 8 mm dia the uh, spacing is changed so if we are going to use the 10 mm dia for 2 leg stirrups or 4 leg stirrup so spacing comes out to be due to these formula spacing comes out to be this 7 into cross d so we have to take the minimum of above 3 values finally it has been taken by this sheet 120 mm so so you have to provide the stirrups like 4 leg stirrups 10 mm dia 120 mm center to center right then we have to check for the one way shear so the critical at a distance d from the beam so it has been calculated by this sheet we have all already discussed these things so finally we have to check that okay in one way shear right and for the punching shear it has already been calculated by the sheet also so we have already discussed in other videos so it has already been calculated that okay in two way shear and the bearing stress of the column it is okay the bearing stress of the column is less than the bearing capacity of the concrete so finally these are the checks so suppose if we are changing uh, our depth of the footing like uh, if you are changing this if once 117 if we are taking this 120 mm right then we can check the sheet has calculated that you have to increase your depth that's why we have chosen 2 to 2.5 times for the safer sheet right so now if we change uh, to this is 700 kN on column b the load has been changed all the calculations has already been changed now this has been changed now 2.23 is the l1 2.81 is the l2 1.5 if we remain this b as assumed as 1.5 so 36.1 so finally depth of the total depth of the footing has been calculated finally these are the calculations now you can see the shear force diagram the values of the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram has been changed right so the calculation will be changed you have to put your data according to these conditions and it can be designed and detailing will be done by this sheet so finally we have completed our third part so i hope uh, now you can use the, this sheet to calculate the design and detailing of the strap beam footing yourself right so if you like this video if you want this uh, actual sheet or whole course you can contact me on my number thanks for watching and please subscribe this channel for more videos